Okay, here we have a, a lovely piece of Mackay cedar, um, which is taken from the uh, the northern parts of Australia, which is, uh, of course, being in the southern hemisphere, that makes it uh, a tropical area. And uh, this is uh, fairly rare wood these days, um, and uh, it uh, a lot of it was harvested in the 18th century, 19th, early 19th century um, for fine furniture and was shipped over to, to England. So um, we, today we're going to make a platter. Um, I can get about 11 and a half inches um, or 290 millimetres out of the platter. We're going to make it a cheese board with, uh, uh, and uh, ma make a, a matching uh, handle for a cheese knife as well. So, first things first, we'll cut it out of the bandsaw. We'll do what we can to save these, they're very precious pieces. As you see, we drill out a center and then mount it onto the lathe. Most people see that as a scraper. It's one of the handiest tools that I've got and uh, it certainly does uh, cut very well. Um, it's ground specially so it can be used almost like a bowl gouge. It's just as handy um, making your project round as well, as you can see. Having uh, done that, um, we're going to shape the bottom of the platter. Um, I'm glad this is in high speed. It gets boring uh, <laughs> if you're just watching it in normal time. Um, but as you can see, that uh, the scraper is uh, very effective. The um, material we're using, the Mackay Cedar, um, some people can become allergic. You can't see it there, but I've got a full face mask, uh, breathing mask on, um, along with my um, head protection or eye protection. Um, so uh, just find out a little bit about the timber you do use because it's, uh, it is important. Um, that you're not breathing in any carcinogens, carcinogens or whatever, um, but this uh, it's a beautiful material that I'm working with. Apart from that smell, or apart from the, uh, it makes you sneeze a lot, and uh, you can be allergic to it. I'm not allergic to it, thank goodness, but um, it uh, does uh, make you sneeze. But obviously we're uh, we've turned the uh, platter around, and I'm just squaring the face. Now you'll see, um, I'm just about to um, get rid of our holding point in the lathe, but I'll re I'll, once I've uh, got the lines in and uh, uh, I've got the, the centre ceramic fitted, I'll recut that so that I can re uh, remount and turn the, um, uh, turn the platter around again and, and to uh, square off the end, the, the bottom. Um, and of course, uh, that goes underneath the. Uh, that, it's not an issue because it goes underneath the ceramic. Uh, but we do, when we finally glue it up, make sure that there's uh, a nice padding of uh, super, of um, hot glue underneath it uh, to make sure that there's no weak points when you're putting pressure on the middle. So uh, yeah, we're just uh, cleaning out and getting that uh, to fit. And there you can see we finally. Um, done the platter and it's just finishing off now with uh, sanding with the, up to the various grits um, plus I like to take the shavings and rub with the shavings too that also helps in the finish and as you can see the that's fitting quite well now in terms of finish uh, on this material um, you'll see the, the, the beautiful grain and the colour of the, the material but I'm using uh, a triple E cream from uh, U-Butte in Industries 
Um, it's a, a mixture of uh, beeswax and canuba wax and it also has a grit within it like a sandpaper grit that breaks down the more that you rub it and the more that you, you obviously rub it at high speed on the lathe that it actually breaks down breaks down to smaller and smaller grit so it's like um, sanding from 600 right down to maybe um, 10 or 20,000 grit um, if you continue to use it um, and then of course you polish that uh, holding your, your paper against it your paper towel you polish that up and it comes up a treat but, and it's also a great finish to use underneath a final topping, which I'm using here, um, and that it's another U-Boot product. It's a shellac base, uh, wipe-on poly, uh, just like a finish, finishing polish, um, and using the two in, in, in together, like preparing it well beforehand, it really comes up a treat. just bring the camera in a little bit closer uh, at this point so you can get a, a real close-up of the grain and and as uh, others would say the chatoyance which just um, really makes that 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 come up absolutely beautifully but having done that um, we will flip it over once more and uh, finish up the uh, uh, the bottom, and we'll, and as you can see, I've left uh, that um, inset, uh, cut that a uh, holding place again, so they can grip on the other side. Uh, and now this time we will finish the base off, um, f and uh, bring the tool rest up, and uh, we'll take that. Um, Put a curvature in the bottom and um, take out the uh, the holding area again using my trusty scraper i know it's got a scraping action but it's it, it is a lovely it does do a lovely cut it's nice and clean um, timber is very forgiving too so uh, here we're going through again through going through the final process I'm just applying the shellac um, after having put on the triple A cream and working that now we put the shellac as a final uh, product and you'll see on the back here more so on the front than the front that you know the, how, how beautiful this um, this timber and the grain comes up so under a bit of speed and, and pressure um, it dries very quickly too. It's obviously like a heat activated, makes it dry quicker, and you can just see how how beautifully that gleams. Okay, as we said, we use um, hot glue to put the uh, ceramic plate in the middle, um, using a, a nice big dob in the middle uh, there, so to to cushion. So if you once you're cutting on the board, there's any pressure you put on the centre won't crack the the tile. So just make sure that that's if you if you're doing something like this that you think about all those things. So we'll just uh, pop that in and uh, centre it. Again, if you'll notice, I've left probably about a thirty second or uh, a millimetre right round the edge, so it's not a tight fit. And the reason you do that is so that. Um, obviously wood expands and contracts so if it contracted it may uh, it may cause a split uh, in the the timber plate so you just leave a little bit of um, gap there now we're working on the the handle for the uh, the knife the cheese knife and I'm just setting out just a little bit of detail um, at one point in here, we've uh, we've missed a bit of the video. And we sort of jump to the finished product fairly quickly, but um, nevertheless, uh, I don't think I'm showing you anything. Uh, 
Can I wear off? Uh, just shaping the handle down. There we go. Um, just do a little bit of details um, on the end of the knife. Now, what I, I didn't show in there is uh, me drilling the appropriate size hole, which I've now got the cone uh, of, um, resting in, but I, uh, I've drilled it down ready for the knife handle. Uh, and now it's just a matter of polishing that up, and then we'll uh, part off uh, either end. I don't get too pedantic about the parting. I, I, I the obviously I, the, everything's all polished up, and, and we do part off the end. So there's the process. Thank you very much for watching.